already moved with uh, the ceremony and your love. And I don't know if the words that I have written in this paper represent my emotions at this moment. But in any case, since I have written them, I'm going to read them to you. Respected Rector, Respected Vice Rectors, and respected members of the Senate, ladies and gentlemen. Today is an important day, not only for me personally, but for homeopathy as well. An important day for me personally because you are honoring me, nominating me Dr. Honoris Causa. And therefore, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to all members of the Senate who took the decision of this nomination. <coughs> I feel that today the whole world is in a turmoil and in the brink of a global, global catastrophe. The mentality of the Western people, mostly of scientists and politicians, seems to be in a state of confusion. I have hardly found anybody today that denies this fact. My question is, why we arrive at such a state of animosity between nations? Why so much selfishness and greed has manifested in our behavior? that brought upon us so much insecurity, anxiety, depression, and unhappiness instead of feelings of peace and brotherhood. It is my experience in examining thousands of cases in the last 50 years that the general state of health, especially the mental condition of those who had access to the best possible medical care, has been gradually deteriorating. As you know, Europe and uh, America and uh, Canada they had the best possible coverage of health, yet I feel their minds are not working properly. But why is it that those who had such a good medical care with vaccinations, antibiotics and hormones have been altered in their mental and emotional states is to create a generation so hard-hearted and primarily <coughs> a mind which is so selfish and greedy. Is the natural evolution of human beings to become more and more selfish and materialistic? nurturing hatred and divisions? Or is it to become more and more spiritual, serene, happy and joyful, caring for each other? I know from personal experience and observations that all humans have the potential of experiences, uh, experiencing 
elated states of happiness and bliss if they manage to get rid of their selfishness. I have seen this happening in the most healthy of them. If an individual is in a state of happiness, there is not the least possibility of doing harm to others. The question is why such individuals are so few today in the Western world as not to be able to form a critical mass to resist the negative aspects developing more and more every day. Why, why, why then it is that the Western world that is considered to be the leaders of the whole world today are promoting all these negative qualities of hatred and divisions, nations against nations, races against one another, religious sects preaching hatred and divisionism against each other, and all of this situation threatens to annihilate the human race from the face of the earth. Could the minds of those politicians, financiers and scientists who are making global decisions be, could their minds be sane and healthy? I doubt. What we know from our homeopathic experience is that our daily decisions and actions many times are influenced and sometimes even dictated by our mental emotional pathology. This is not a theoretical aspect anymore. Today we know that it is a fact. If the above assumptions are correct, then obviously something has gone terribly wrong concerning the health of the general population of the Western countries. The question is why? Without ignoring the contribution of several environmental factors that affect health, without ignoring the influence of the modern competitive societies in creating anxiety, fears, insecurities and aggressions, I estimate that the greatest contribution in the creation of the mental state of contemporary people lies with an unwise overuse of conventional chemical drugs, hormones and vaccinations that have affected deeply the human organism and also the function of the brain. According to a research that was carried out in our academy for more than 30 years, the outcome was published in a leading medical journal with the title The Continuum of a Unified Theory of Diseases, which shows the role of chemical drugs in suppressing diseases towards the very central part of the human organism, which is the brain. What was amazing for me was to observe that any chemical drug designed to combat a particular pathology, after being inserted into the organism, did not have a somewhat vague side effect, but followed 
a determinate pathway in the organism, many times triggering the inherent predisposition, the weak points of the patient for manifesting chronic diseases. If we assume that the above assumptions are close to the truth, then we have to admit that the present state of the global politics and global finances are the outcome of sick minds that cannot see anymore the essential and the obvious, which is the promotion of happiness and joy for all people. But on the contrary, they seek diffuse ways for managing the masses in order to exploit them. Then we have to accept that we have a difficult medical problem to solve. And for this purpose, all of us who are concerned with the health of the genera general population have to sit together with a critical mind to find the best solutions. I do not believe that conventional medicine so far has been able to give reliable answers to the main medical problems, especially in chronic diseases. But neither homeopathy has all the answers. But I'm sure that academic medicine will be benefited by the impregnation of new ideas and perceptions coming from a system with a totally different point of view, which is homeopathy. I hope that this meeting will be the beginning of a dialogue that can end into the emergence of a new paradigm in medicine less harmful and more humane. Perhaps in the near future, we may envision that new schools of medicine will emerge where students will be taught not only the technological medicine, but also will be inspired by their teachers as to bring out the best qualities of a healer which is an inner state of love and wisdom for the benefit of their patients. Thank you for listening to me.